Good morning. I'm Jan Cope, Provost of the Cathedral, and I'm delighted to welcome you to our service this morning on Monday, May 23rd. It's the feast day for two famous astronomers, Nicholas Copernicus and Johannes Kepler. Let us pray. Lord God, you've brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for this feast day. As the heavens declare your glory, O God, and the firmament shows your handiwork, we bless your name for the gifts of knowledge and insight you bestowed upon Nicholas Copernicus and Johannes Kepler. And we pray that you would continue to advance our understanding of your cosmos for our good and for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, the firstborn of all creation, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. The scripture appointed for today is not surprisingly Psalm 8. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the earth. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you've set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You've made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beast of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Psalm 8 is a perfect scripture choice for the two astronomers we remember today. Copernicus studied both law and medicine before becoming a cleric. And Copernicus first posited the belief that the sun, rather than the earth, was the center of the universe around which planets rotated. His theory was further developed by Galileo, who frankly got into hot water with the church for his beliefs. Interestingly, though, Copernicus saw no conflict between his theory and the authority of scripture. His major work was actually originally dedicated to the Pope, just to underscore that he didn't see a conflict between the two. Kepler followed Copernicus almost 100 years later, and he was one of those chiefly responsible for solidifying Copernicus's theories. Like Copernicus, he saw no conflict between his astronomical views and the account of God in Scripture. Kepler is chiefly known for his discovery of the laws of planetary motion. Both these men, through their life's work, testified to the extraordinary presence of God in creation and maintained in the face of both religious and scientific controversy that science can lead us more deeply into an understanding of the workings of the Creator. Going back to Psalm 8, which speaks of the heavens and the moon and stars, several centuries later than Copernicus and Kepler came the NASA Apollo program. And I will readily confess I am of a generation that were NASA followers and Apollo program followers. My generation grew up 
with NASA in the space race. On Apollo 8, the astronauts read portions of Psalm 8 to the entire listening world as they made their way back to Earth. Buzz Aldrin also quoted Psalm 8 on the Apollo 11 mission after that historic landing on the moon. Bringing us to current times, there's never a time when I'm taking my early morning walks when often it's still a bit dark outside. When I look up in the skies, and sometimes I see the moon and the stars, and sometimes I see the International Space Station, that I don't marvel at God and God's created order, and that there is no conflict between what we can achieve in science and God's great creation. When done properly, it's a beautiful, beautiful masterpiece. And the International Space Station is a testament to what when we work together, nothing is impossible with God. On this day when we remember two famous astronomers who changed the world's understanding of the planetary system. Who are the people in your life today who remind you of the close relationship between science and our faith? Science and God, the great creator of all things. On this day, let us give thanks to those who've gone before and those who continue to explore and to dream and to praise our God. Amen. And now will you join me in the prayer our Savior Christ taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A prayer of self-dedication. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.